May I have your attention, please? The march, because of the rain, a number of people are now just forming in the march. We will delay in order to allow them to get into the line of march at least 10 minutes. There are now about 2,000 people in the street, and they look to be coming like about maybe 100 every 10 minutes. So we're going to give them another 10 minutes to get into the line. We will signal Helen Irving through her officer five minutes before you should be at the start of the march. That will not happen until at least 2.10. But around 2.10, you should begin to take your position near the elevator or, or however you're going to travel downstairs so we can go. It's not raining now. <laughs> Isaiah said it would hold off, so I take the prophet's word. Uh, are there any questions about, let me go over security procedures. I think all of you have been, have received a, um, a flyer. Let me emphasize a couple of things. Once you are outdoors, you are under the direction of the security staff headed by Ron Fleming. Most of you know Ron Fleming, he's head of the, excuse me, Lieutenant Ron Fleming, he just got promoted yesterday. Lieutenant Fleming will direct you, follow the instructions of the security officers, no matter what they tell you to do or how ridiculous it may sound. Because if you don't do what they ask you to do and they ask you, the next thing they will do is physically cause you to follow their instruction. So please pay close attention to the security while you are on the street. Number two, you are celebrities. You know a lot of people in Detroit and more know you. Do not invite those people to join you in the march because security will not permit it. When you, when you go into the plaza, Local 600 is forming what we are calling an honor guard for you. They will escort you into the plaza, down the first right steps, into the holding area. Please do not invite anybody to come and join you in the holding area. Security won't permit that either. The only people who will get into the secure area are the people with the staff credentials and people with VIP credentials. That's all. Now, it is possible for, the, for an exception to be made, but you should contact Helen Irving or Sergeant Ron Fleming, excuse me, Lieutenant Ron Fleming, to get that done. But that can only be done once you are in the holding room. Are there any questions? It will take you about 25 minutes to walk from the fissure into the plaza, and there are already people in the plaza. If, if there are people whom you have invited here, we have a, the same security setup that we have downstairs for giving credentials is available in the plaza. So the people who do not get their credentials here will be able to get them down in the plaza. Uh, can I have Richard Brooks? Brooks, are you on the line? How many people do we have in the plaza? Uh, I think we're up around 1,500 to about 2,000. Okay, we've got 2,000 people in the plaza, about 2,500 people in the march. So even in spite of the rain, 5,000 people have come out here to join the No Crime Day march. We all want this to be a success.
Ladies and gents, uh, we want to thank you for uh, coming out today. We're, we're only coming for a few minutes, but we still got some more to take. Uh, Ebenezer is second Baptist, right?
looking at? How you doing? Pork. Long time pork. no Long time no
and oppression, that peace and justice may prevail with order, and that men, women, and children from different cultures and backgrounds with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. Amen. The first speaker that we'd like to introduce to you today be the president of the East Side Coordinating Council, president of Detroit Area Residents East. Give a nice warm welcome for Mr. Frank Porta. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to greet you today. And uh, one of the other celebrities made sure that it rained a little bit and it thundered a little bit for those folks who might think about committing a few crimes. So I think he's helped her out a little bit. The other thing is that the rain didn't seem to stop any of us, so it shows Detroiters are tough. The youth of Detroit, the youth of Detroit, I really ask you that we need your help. Because the adults of Detroit, we're trying our darndest, but you've got a lot of energy, you see a lot, you know a lot, you know what's actually happening in your school. If Detroit's greatest asset is its people, then certainly its youth is its most precious investment. And to protect that investment, I believe we have to look at the family and the home as a key spot for developing proper attitudes and values. We have to look at the neighborhood. We have to look at the schools and the churches. We have to participate in things such as neighborhood watch, CB patrols, and get involved in community organizations. Many of those things provide opportunities for young people to gain experience. For instance, in my own organization, we have a newsletter. If any young person is interested in developing journalism skills, you've got an opportunity to submit an article. You've got an opportunity to participate in that newsletter. If you don't have a newsletter on your block or your neighborhood community organization, start one. I dare say there won't be a community organization officer president in the city of Detroit that wouldn't welcome the hand. And when it comes time to apply for a job, don't forget to put that activity on your resume. I'm sure many employers want to know if you volunteer and have experience in a community organization. Don't forget the many stations, the neighborhood city halls, and other community resources that, re that need your participation as volunteers. And, and volunteers, what are they really? They're participants in our democracy. Also think you've got to use your creativity and imagination to help solve issues related to crime. And I, what I'm talking about here is, for instance, the idea or concept of using schools as community centers. And you may have other ideas. Also, it's a little disheartening sometimes to see that the media doesn't really appreciate the situation. By that I mean, kind of didn't really turn me on to see that we have a scorecard that's trying to say how many murders in Detroit. I'm not, a, I'm not a real sports buff myself, but I'm sure Isaiah will agree, it isn't fair to just put one score on the board. Let's put the score, let's put the number of the CB patrols, the number of neighborhood watches, the number of people are in the reserves on the board. Let's be fair. And finally, I, I really think that we will deal with crime. We will achieve our goal, which is to make Detroit one of the safest cities in the United States, the model, of the model for other cities to follow if we retain the vision, the fortitude, and tenacity to make a better and safer Detroit. See you in September 1987. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We'd like to thank everybody for coming. Nobody did that. Thank you.
for showing up. We also have some other people we'll introduce to you in a few minutes. We're gonna keep the program moving though. What? The split. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great day for us. And this is a kind of a sad day for us. This is the time for no crime. We are going to have to come together, children, and try to find out where that we stand when we come down the crime. We have a responsibility in every neighborhood in the city of Detroit. Every street in every neighborhood should have a black club. You should have a neighborhood watch. And you should have everything with each other need is to watch our community ourselves. And not more than that, what is worrying me so bad if the federal government of this country would give us some money so that we can hire our children and nobody would come along and tell them to carry this dope somewhere and I will give you $20 when he's making 10000 when he is sending the money over there to other people and he's letting the, our people over there die for hunger and he will not give us money to the different cities in the United States is to hire our young people so they won't have to work for dope. Those are the things that we're going to have to talk about. We hear on the news media we hear everybody, why is the Detroit is like this? They know it, but we don't have to tell them why. They know why we are not doing what the, the, the thing is here. They know why the federal government won't do things for Detroit. We got the best black man in this country and he don't like it. And this is our reason why that this man will not give us money to hire our children so they won't have to be paid by the dope addict so they can get some money. So let's come together and let these people know that this is time for no crime. And if we stay together, children, they'll know we mean business. Splatter's Wood. We got a couple of rappers to bring to you. No, 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 I'm not gonna rap, no. And we got some rappers from the city of Detroit. And they're called the Motor City Organization. We're gonna make sure we got another microphone for them here. Everybody doing okay? Yeah. Let's get it. Once again, this is No Crime Day 1986. And for those of you who don't know it, it's just the beginning of a lot of things to come. And we had to start somewhere, so we thought we'd start with the best, and that's you. So give yourself a round of applause. Now we're going to get ready for the group, the Motor City Organization. Are they ready? Yeah, here they come. C. O. Man, look at all these people out here, bro. Yeah, we got a whole lot of niggas out here tonight, don't we? All these beautiful Detroit people in one spot. Celebrate a day of no crime. That's love. Over the years, there's been too much sadness, too much madness. And now MCO at the No Crime Committee is here to brighten up your day and bring a little gladness. So is y'all ready to rock? We 
gonna see how loud Detroit can get. Come on, 
to say, hey, let's get together and come up with No Crime Day. I'm speaking of Mayor Coleman Young and Isaiah Thomas. Give them a nice round of applause. You won't find it everywhere. And if you don't believe me, do some research. You won't find it everywhere. Too many politicians ride with the windows up, close the ears, and work from behind the desk. Also, we'd like to say hello to Chief Hart, who is also with us today. Oh, by the way, uh, a couple of hours ago, Marvin Hackney was on television. He said, no, he was scared. That's the real deal. We'd like to introduce you to some other people who are with us. Raymond Murphy, who is from the state representative, who is a state representative for the 17th District. All right. Tiola Hunter, who is also a state representative from the 5th District. Got a lot of cars. Samuel A. Turner, who, starting tomorrow, will, I think, head the governor's department in the city of Detroit, right? All right. Also, uh, the county commissioner, Paul Hubbard from New Detroit is also with us today. Dennis Archer, Michigan Supreme Court. Good to see you. You got a bad city, don't you? All right, all right, we're gonna move. Third Deputy Chief from the Detroit Police Department, Mr. Jim Ingram. You know, it's customary to say in a public speaking situation that you're very happy to be here. But in a very real way, I am not happy. I am incensed. What does that mean? It means I'm mad as hell. I'm not, of course, incensed because you're here. I'm not, of course, incensed because of the motivation that propelled us all to be here today. I'm incensed about some of the ways that various people in and around the city of Detroit react to what's going on. For example, there is a billboard recently put up with a picture of a gun on it, with a daily body count, talking about how many people are killed by gunfire in the city of Detroit. We don't need a body count, we need a head count. And let's start right here with a show of hands, the hands connected to all of the heads who are committed, not just to be here today and talk about no crime, but to make it go on and on. Let's remembering how many. Let that reverberate.
throughout the metropolitan Detroit area. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I am not here to condemn young people. Most of our young people deserve a big round of applause. And the reality is that there are some of our young people who deserve some applause with one hand. Ball up. That is the reality. One of the things that we have got to do in terms of coming together in situations like this and continuing to come together is to make those numbers change dramatically. And there are a number of ways that we know that that could be done. Neither did I come here today, and neither did you, to criticize our city officials, our city council, our police chief, or our mayor. We have a situation in Detroit that is not hopeless. I've always said there are no hopeless situations. There are only people who have grown hopeless about a situation. Don't allow those members of the news media, and I'm not going to blanketly, in a blanket fashion, criticize the news media. There are those who do many, many positive things inside of the news media. Many of them participated in letting you know about this today. And they do a lot of philanthropic and charitable things who say things like, no crime day. That's a very idealistic kind of thing to come up with. It's an idealistic concept. Every year we have no smoking day, and smoking is certainly more pervasive, more habit forming, and touching more people than crime, but you never hear anybody say, no smoking day is idealistic because they look at the numbers of people on the positive side who do indeed quit smoking. By the same token, let us here today look at the numbers of people who did indeed hear Isaiah Thomas's call and say there will be no crime. Because what I want you to do is look at the way that the system outside of Detroit outside of the state of Michigan, but the American system of relating to people as opposed to material things impacts on our minds. Let's say three men went into an old lady's home with the purpose of robbing her. And in the process of robbing her, they hit the old lady in the head with an ax and killed her and got $15. What do you think the response of news media would be? What do you think it would be? They'd be editorializing for capital punishment overnight. TV stations would be editorializing against it. They ought to get the electric chair without a trial. Do you agree with that? Yeah. All right. Let's change that just a bit. Let's say those same three men went into another old lady's home, killed her in the process of the commission of a robbery, but rather than getting $15, they got five million dollars. Now do you agree that the whole character of the news media response would be different in a lot of ours too? It's, it's our own damn fault. You shouldn't have had that much money in the house. But in each instance we have a human life taker regardless of the amount of money. But this is the way we have been taught to look at things. We got to begin to look at each other a little differently as people, not as objects holding the material possessions that have to be wrested away from them illegally. Don't look at the negative, look at the positive. We have, in the city of Detroit, as a matter of fact, right inside of the Detroit Police Department, a plethora, a number of things that you can get involved with if you're not already involved. You've seen, right here in the downtown area, a number of selfless men and women who volunteer their time. They could be somewhere else, 
doing something to enjoy themselves, but they sacrificed as Detroit police reservists to help protect our city. We have the blue pigs, whom you heard from earlier, and we'll hear from later. We have the finest crime prevention effort in the world. And that does not work without the community and the police coming together. We have the best police chief in the world, it's my belief. And we certainly have the best mayor in the world. I am indeed heartened to see so many of you here today. You're fair weather crime fighters because it rained and some of you who brought those umbrellas are now shielding yourselves from the sun rather than the rain, but you're here. Think again about the positive resources that this city has. Think about the entertainers and some of the athletes, the Thomas Hearns and Milton McCrory's and Magic Johnson's you see up here, along with Isaiah. Think about the four tops and Aretha Franklin who chose to stay and live and work in this city. And then finally, Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, think about yourselves, because you're here. I've spent 47 years since the day I was born in this city, and I love it. Six years ago, the mayor and police chief William Hart sat down and gave me a job that I sincerely love. I'm involved with the training of professional police officers. Big offers. Big job, two decks, one free foot. But I'm not about to sit there all day and insulate myself and isolate myself from what is happening out on the streets. And I have a professional reason for having that kind of an attitude because if I am to be involved in the training of police officers, then it seems to me logical that I ought to be out there on the streets to see what it is they're dealing with. So that's where I am a lot of times. And one of the things I know from growing up in the streets of Detroit and working in the streets of Detroit is that we, despite all the obstacles, despite all the obstructions and criticisms, we are tough people. We are tough. You don't need me to tell you that. But I'd like to join you, and I'd like you to join me in turn, in making one of my personal mottos your own slogan for everyday living, because it's not going to be easy to reduce crime at the same time as we improve our own togetherness and the numbers that we're going to need to make No Crime Day a concurrent reality continually. And that is, the tough times never last, but tough people do. Thank you very much. We are getting to our main speakers. I'd like to also recognize Isaiah Thomas. The next person we'd like to introduce to you is a man who made a lot of news the last couple of days, along with the mayor in our city. It's Congressman John Kanye. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I present to you the man who turned Detroit around, the greatest mayor in the history of Detroit, the most effective mayor of any city in America. We love our city, we love our mayor. On your feet for our mayor, the one and only, the Honorable Coleman Alexander Young. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, God. But it's just the beginning of an all-out fight against crime, which we can only win if you are with us. About two months ago, a young man came into my office. He said, Mayor, I have an idea that I would like to mobilize a no crime day. He said, I know that most crimes are committed by young people. 
and young people are the most victims of crime. But we're going to deal with crime. We got to have, have young people help us deal with crime. That's why you are here. Isaiah Thomas indicated to me that he wanted to mobilize a march, a rally, a banquet, a series of events to bring young people together to turn the crime situation in this city around. We gathered a number of other people, and you see them around this platform. By and large, the people here of that committee. We met every week, and as we came closer to the day, twice a week, I went off to Africa, and they were still meeting. And what you see today, a result of a lot of hard work by a lot of good people. You see world champion boxers here. World